to the group exhibit hydrogen fuel cells and batteries at the Hanover Fair 2017. We are here at the Technical Forum and my name is Miriel Boakas and the upcoming presentation will be regarding Fronius hydrogen technologies for material handling and industrial mobile applications. Please welcome on stage with me the team leader of hydrogen solutions from Fronius International GmbH, Dr. Ewald Wallmüller. Is yours. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, well, I have the opportunity to pre present uh, Fronius Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technology for Material Handling uh, here at this forum. First, I would like to give a brief introduction of Fronius. Fronius is a, an Austrian company, Austrian family-owned, still family-owned com company uh, with about 4,000 employees worldwide. Uh, we are mainly known from uh, welding technologies, probably, uh, but also from solar uh, inverters for, for photovoltaics. And our oldest uh, uh, department uh, is battery chargers for interlogistics and automotive application. And this is also our uh, uh, access to the market uh, in the field of uh, material handling. Uh, you see here that we have a lot of uh, patents, more than 1,000 active patents. Uh, so we understand ourselves as a very technology-oriented uh, company. And this is the reason why we are uh, focused on hydrogen and fuel cells. Uh, we consider as an upcoming uh, um, technology uh, for industrial mobile applications. Well. Uh, what is uh, industrial mo mobile applications about? Uh, it's a broad range of different uh, vehicles. Um, material handling is the largest uh, um, sector in this field with more than one million new trucks uh, per year. Um, the, it splits up in electric trucks, uh, but also internal combustion engine uh, power trucks and uh, electric tr trucks are uh, increasing important in this sector and of course uh, fuel cell uh, would provide a, a, an interesting solution for this uh, uh, type of trucks uh, at least uh, for in indoors application where uh, legislation is already in place um, uh, as there are no emissions allowed uh, uh, for this type of trucks. Uh, fuel cells uh, could also, of course, replace internal combustion engines. Uh, so both uh, electric trucks as well as uh, internal combustion engine trucks uh, um, are relevant uh, um, market potential for, for fuel cell applications. Other um, um, sectors in the field uh, are also interesting, like municipal applications, because uh, there are increasing number of, of cities, for example, uh, who um, uh, implement environmental zones uh, where emission-free uh, um, drives are of interest. Well, uh, we at Fronius, we, we concentrate on material handling, but, but also on min municipal services so far, uh, because uh, it's interesting uh, that there are uh, larger fleets in one location, so it's possible to implement also uh, the refueling infrastructure for, for these uh, applications. Uh, looking on the world market um, of um, fuel cell application in the material handling area, you see that uh, US is much more advanced of over Europe. There are more than 10,000 uh, fuel cell power trucks uh, already in place. Um, Europe is somewhat lack lacking behind. There is already a number of uh, companies 
logistic companies uh, uh, testing fuel cells in intralogistics uh, and, and some of them also uh, did positive uh, uh, primary experience and now increase their volume and Fronius of course want to be part of this uh, increasing uh, uh, numbers of implementation. Uh, we did uh, fuel, cell, fuel cell testing in material handling applications already over several years. Uh, this truck here uh, was operated in the so-called ELOG BioFlick project at DB Schenke in Hersching uh, in Austria. It's about 20 kilometers far from, from Fronius uh, R&D. Uh, facilities and this is a crosstalk application which is really very demanding um, and, and so fuel cells uh, provide uh, um, a sustainable uh, and, and, and meet those uh, um, uh, requirements and, and are prepared to um, get a broader share of, of, ma of the market. Uh, in this, in this uh, project, ELOG Biofleet, uh, we tested um, 10 um, stand-on pallet trucks from Linde um, in a 24 hours, 5 days a week uh, uh, application. Uh, an indoor uh, refueling station, the first in Europe, um, uh, was installed there, uh, which generates hydrogen from biogas as a renewable energy source. Uh, the, bio, the hydrogen um, is compressed and um, you refueled uh, into the vehicles. So far we collected over more than 50,000 hours uh, of operation in the fleet. Uh, we have a large number of start-stop cycles at our fuel cells, as you see, and this is a major degradation mechanism, so we, we, we have this uh, very good under control, uh, the degradation um, uh, in our fuel cells, and, and we are confident to be able to achieve 10,000 hours uh, of stack life um, um, in this um, um, application. We have a very, in, very good uh, system efficiency and from the number of refuelings you see uh, that also um, uh, the infrastructure uh, is ready for, for, mar for the market. Um, this was a funding project, a national funding project. Uh, it ended in the middle of uh, 2016 and we are very happy to announce that uh, from uh, early 2017 we are uh, able uh, to um, uh, go on with the project on a co commercial basis together with our partner. Um, Looking on the CO2 footprint of this application, um, uh, Schenker used um, um, hydropower for battery charging before and it could be shown that using uh, hydrogen from um, biomass um, has the same level of uh, CO2 emissions uh, but of course at improved performance. Uh, if you would compare um, uh, this uh, biogas uh, uh, hydrogen application uh, to conventional uh, UCTA e, uh, uh, electricity mix, uh, we have a, f uh, a factor of three of CO2 uh, uh, reduction. Uh, looking on the business case of, of this application, someone can see that uh, today, of course, as there is not um, a high degree of industrialization of this uh, fuel cell, uh, we are higher uh, in cost compared to other uh, battery or conventional lead acid batteries and uh, lithium batteries, but uh, we are confident if we can achieve the, the, the required vol volumes and market share, we can bring down uh, um, the industrialized hydrogen technology to the level of, of, of other battery applications uh, with the uh, advantage that we, that this uh, hydrogen uh, technology provides more flexibility and driving range and compared to at least uh, lead acid batteries uh, uh, less um, handling uh, um, effort and, and maintenance. Well, uh, 
as a result from the project we had underway so far, uh, we redesigned our system um, uh, for 24 volts, uh, 48 volts, uh, uh, small power applications. Uh, we did a lot of functional in integration uh, in into the unit, so uh, truck integration uh, becomes much more easy. Um, we increased the refueling pressure in the system uh, to the standard 350 bar refueling, uh, resulting in increased driving range. Uh, and uh, um, this is a driving range is, a, is, is, is resulting from a high efficiency and, and a high energy content per refueling. Um, we have a detached display so that the driver can see uh, um, uh, easily uh, the status of the system and uh, we are confident um, uh, to achieve 10,000 hours of stack life, which is a very, very important factor in ter uh, for um, um, the business case. Uh, currently, we enlarge our portfolio of different uh, uh, types of um, fuel cells uh, for, for this very diverse uh, range of, of, of trucks uh, necessary to, to supply the material handling uh, business. And we also um, uh, develop um, high pressure electrolysis at 350 bar uh, in order to pro provide a small scale refueling infrastructure for this um, uh, project here. Um, at the moment, um, we are implementing a first uh, installation of the 350 bar refueling uh, without mechanical compression uh, at, in our uh, R&D uh, uh, site in Talheim in Austria. Um, in order to, to uh, get it get experience how to implement uh, such a refueling in infrastructure and uh, also, of course, uh, to, to test it. Uh, we did also, um, um, with a prior version of this high-pressure electrolysis, a project together with an Austrian consortium uh, within a, a wind-to-hydrogen application in order to learn how to uh, design and, and uh, install a scalable uh, high-pressure electrolysis uh, uh, infrastructure used for uh, uh, energy storage and, and refueling. Well, and this picture is a vision of how we see logistics sites in the future. Um, and here you see, um, of course, interlogistics as an um, integrated part of this uh, energy storage and, and utilization uh, um, uh, system. Uh, but we see that uh, not only for interlogistics, um, hydrogen technology is relevant. It's also relevant on the road uh, uh, for uh, powering uh, trucks. And, and the, de the hydrogen demand for the trucks is much more higher than for the interlogistics. And so uh, there is a big synergy between interlogistics and, and, and trucks um, in, in terms of getting reduced high cost of hydrogen. Um, and and um, so we see that maybe um, in the near future, there are already projects underway, um, a, a big uh, a driver for um, implementing hydrogen technology in log logistic uh, sites comes from on-road trucks. Uh, coming to my summary, uh, hydrogen and fuel cells technology is uh, not, not only green uh, mobility and transport, they can improve uh, performance and also economics. Um, intelligent platform solutions for both fuel cells and also infrastructure is needed uh, in order to provide um, um, scalable and, and cost-effective um, um, solutions. Uh, and um, I think it's still clear that there is um, uh, a need for large-scale field evaluation at the customer sites in order to, to identify and overcome barriers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for this presentation. Are there any questions from the audience right now? Uh, as coming from the chemical industry, 
Uh, what is the uh, X-proof uh, uh, characteristic of, of this equipment? Can it be operated in a refinery or a, a chemical plant? Um, well, it, it's, it's not. Uh, well, the, the, for example, for the fuel cell, uh, it uses as a concept primary explosion protection. Um, uh, inside uh, the unit there, so we, we circulate air through the system and uh, uh, measure the, the hydrogen concentration at the outlet. And if we uh, detect uh, a critical uh, concentration uh, caused by, for example, the hydrogen leak inside the system, uh, it's uh, uh, qualified switched off and the tank valve is closed and, and there is no uh, danger for the ambience. So it, the, it doesn't need any requirement uh, in, the, um, uh, yeah, in the operating environment uh, uh, to, to do this, to operate this. Was this your question? I, I, it was very interesting w w uh, to hear, but uh, is there any ignition source or uh, uh, if we have an, uh, in the surrounding an, atmo an explosive atmosphere in the surrounding yeah. of the, this equipment, is it uh, feasible to operate? No, unfortunately not. Uh, it's not explosion protected itself. Further questions? Then I would like to ask a question. You talked about uh, increasing market share to lower the costs. Um, is there a concrete approach or I mean, you have a lot of collaborations already ongoing. Are you trying to extend these collaborations or do you expect to have a, a larger market uh, share with the uh, ongoing partnerships? Yes, um, we have uh, a number of projects uh, underway uh, which cannot yet be announced, but, but it's true, of course, we, we cooperate with the leaders in the business uh, in order to, to, to bring this technology into the market. Thank you very much. One more time. Um, they are not having a booth this year um, at the group exhibit. So if you have further questions, please reach out to him right after the presentation. Or send me an email. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So the next presentation will start at 1 p.m. Uh, it will be regarding O-ring materials for hydrogen station devices with Takaishi Industry and Co. I appreciate that you're still here, even for this lunchtime. Looking forward to the next presentation. Thank you very much.